when it, when it comes to rebuilding our economy, Barack is thinking about folks like my dad and like his grandmother. He's thinking about the pride that comes from a hard day's work. That's why he signed the Lilly Led Better Fair Pay Act, to help women get equal pay for equal work. That's why he cut taxes for working families and small businesses and fought to get the auto industry back on its feet. That's how he brought our economy from the brink of collapse to creating jobs again, jobs you can raise a family on, good jobs, right here in the United States of America. When it comes to the health of our families, Barack refused to listen to all those folks who told him to leave health reform for another day, another president. He didn't care whether it was the easy thing to do politically. No, that's not how he was raised. He cared that it was the right thing to do. He, he did it because he believes that here in America, our grandparents should be able to afford their medicine. Our kids should be able to see a doctor when they're sick. And no one in this country should ever go broke because of an accident or an illness. And he believes that women are more than capable of making our own choices about our bodies and our health care. That's what my husband stands for. To giving our kids the education they deserve. Barack knows that like me and like so many of you, he never could have attended college without financial aid. And believe it or not, when we were first married, our combined monthly student loan bill was actually higher than our mortgage. Yeah, we, we were so young, so in love, and so in debt. <laughs> And that's why Barack has fought so hard to increase student aid and keep interest rates down because he wants every young person to fulfill their promise and be able to attend college without a mountain of debt. So in the end, for Barack, these issues aren't political. They're personal because Barack knows what it means when a family struggles. He knows what it means to want something more for your kids and grandkids. Barack knows the American dream because he's lived it. And he wants everyone in this country, everyone, to have the same opportunity, no matter who we are or where we're from or what we look like or who we love. that when you've worked hard and done well and, and walked through that doorway of opportunity, you do not slam it shut behind you. No, you reach back and you give other folks the same chances that help you succeed. When, when people ask me whether being in the White House has changed my husband, I, I can honestly say that when it comes to his character and his convictions and his heart, Barack Obama is still the same man I fell in love with all those years ago. Yeah. He, he, he's the same man who, who started his career by turning down high paying jobs and instead working in struggling neighborhoods where a steel planet shut down, fighting to rebuild those communities and get folks back to work. Because for Barack, success isn't about how much money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives.
when our girls were first born, would anxiously check their cribs every few minutes to ensure that they were still breathing, proudly showing them off to everyone we knew. You see, that's the man who sits down with me and our girls for dinner nearly every night, patiently answering questions about issues in the news, strategizing about middle school friendships. That's the man I, I see in, in those quiet moments late at night, hunched over his desk, poring over the letters people have sent him. The, the letter from the father struggling to pay his bills, Fr from the woman dying of cancer whose insurance company won't cover her care, Fr from the young people with so much promise but so few opportunities. A and I see the concern in his eyes, a and I hear the determination in his voice as he tells me, you won't believe what these folks are going through, Michelle. It's not right. We've got to keep working to fix this. We've got so much more to do. of struggles and hopes and dreams. I see how that's what drives Barack Obama every single day. And I didn't think that it was possible, but let me tell you today, I love my husband even more than I did four years ago, even more than I did 23 years ago when we first met. Let me tell you why. See, I, I love that he has never forgotten how he started. I, I, I love that we can trust Barack to do what he says he's going to do, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. Yeah, I, I love that for Barack, there is no such thing as us and them. He doesn't care whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or none of the above. He knows that we all love our country. And he is always ready to listen to good ideas. He's always looking for the very best in everyone he meets. And I, I love that even in the toughest moments, when we're all sweating it, <laughs> when, when we're worried that the bill won't pass and it seems like all is lost. See, Barack never lets himself get distracted by the chatter and the noise, no. Just like his grandmother, he just keeps getting up and moving forward with patience and wisdom and courage and grace. a long game here and that change is hard and change is slow and it never happens all at once but eventually we get there we always do we, we, we get there because of folks like my dad folks like Barack's grandmother men and women who who said to themselves I may not have a chance to fulfill my dreams but maybe my children will maybe my grandchildren will See, see, so many of us stand here tonight because of their sacrifice and longing and steadfast love because time and again they swallowed their fears and doubts and did what was hard. So today, when the challenges we face start to seem overwhelming or even impossible, let us never forget that doing the impossible is the history of this nation. It is who we are as Americans. It is how this country was built. And, and if, if our parents 
parents and grandparents could toil and, and struggle for us. You know, if they could raise beams of steel to the sky, send a man to the moon, connect the world with the touch of a button, then, then surely we can keep on sacrificing and building for our own kids and grandkids, right? And, and if so many brave men and women could wear our country's uniform and sacrifice their lives for our most fundamental rights, then surely we can do our part as citizens of this great democracy to exercise those rights. Surely we can get to the polls on election day and make our voices heard. If, if, if farmers and blacksmiths could win independence from an empire, if, if immigrants could leave behind everything they knew for a better life on our shores, if women could be dragged to jail for seeking the vote, if a generation could defeat a depression and define greatness for all time, if a young preacher could lift us to the mountaintop with his righteous dream, and if proud Americans can be who they are and boldly stand at the altar with who they love, then surely, surely, we can give everyone in this country a fair chance at that great American dream. anything else. That is the story of this country. The story of unwavering hope grounded in unyielding struggle. That is what has made my story and Barack's story and, and, and so many other American stories possible. And let me tell you something, I say all of this tonight, not just as First Lady, no, not just as a wife. You see, at the end of the day, my most important title is still Mom and Chief. My, my, my daughters are, are still the heart of my heart and the center of my world. But let me tell you, today I have none of those worries from four years ago, no. Not about whether Barack and I were doing what was best for our girls. Because today, I know from experience that if I truly want to leave a better world for my daughters and, and for all of our sons and daughters, if, if we want to give all of our children a foundation for their dreams and opportunities worthy of their promise, if, if we want to give them that sense of limitless possibility, that belief that here in America, there is always something better out there, if you're willing to work for it, then we must work like never before. And we must once again come together and stand together for the man we can trust to keep